And maybe I. Hallelujah. Romans 8 and verse number 35. Allow me to read verse, verse 31 and then go to 35. Verse 31 says, What then shall we say in response to all these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? And then we go to 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship, all persecution, all famine, all nakedness, all danger, all sword? It is a question that Paul is asking. And so it's a, it's a, it's leading up to this, there's a whole passage that we need to read up there. But we have started by saying, if God is for us, who can be against us? And Paul continues down there to say that if God is for us, who is it? And what is it that can be against us? If you know, and we know that for sure that God is for us, we are, if we are convinced that God is for us, that is what Paul is bringing to our attention. If you and I, and this morning we pray by the grace of God, that we shall be horribly convinced that God is for you and God is for me. If God is for you and God is for me, Paul is asking, who then can start against us? What then can start against us? If we rise up to this kind of faith, church of God, this morning, you will wake up and face the circumstances that are in your life right now and speaking to those circumstances, encouraging yourself, the word of God is bubbling up from your spirit that if God is for me, who can start against me? If God what is it? What circumstance can be greater than my God? If my God starts with me this morning, I don't care what else starts outside here. I don't care who speaks and what says what. What I care about is that my God is for me. There is nobody and there is nothing that can start against me this day, can start against you this morning. And so Paul says, who shall separate us from that love of Christ? That one, that God who starts for me and nobody and nothing can be against us, then what is it that can separate me from his love, from his connection, from intimacy with him? And this is where we are, church of God. Paul goes to call upon a few things into our attention this morning. Shall trouble, number one, shall trouble separate us from the love of Christ? That one who, if he is for us, nobody and nothing can stand against us. So when trouble does come along this life, because it does, trouble, church of God, we know what trouble is. Does trouble, is trouble going to separate you and me from the love of that Christ who loved us that much, who when he starts with me, nothing can start against me. We have trouble, trouble. The Bible says that trouble will be there round about us. That in one of the Psalms, the Bible says that many are the troubles of man, but the Lord will deliver us from all of them. Many are the troubles. It's in one of, of the Psalms, but the Lord will deliver us from all of them. So shall trouble separate us from the life of love of Christ. So Paul there speaks in one of the, he says, many are the troubles of mankind, but the Lord will deliver you. So there is no trouble that the Lord cannot deliver you from. There is none of them. And so here Paul is saying, shall trouble separate you from the love of Christ? If there is trouble, the Lord Jesus is the deliverer of, of, of deliverers us from that trouble. So trouble cannot separate us from the love of Christ. And then he says, shall hardship separate us from the love of Christ? Hardship in this life? So here Paul is saying, it is likely that hardship will come across our way. We shall find hardship along our way. We shall find the barriers and the barricades along our way. But Paul is asking us, is that hardship? Today, that situation in front of you, today, that barrier in front of you, in your life, in your family, any situation that appears a mountain in front of you, is that one going to be a barrier for you? Is it going to separate you from the love of Christ? That hardship in your family, that hardship in your personal life, this morning, the hardship that it seems to be lifting itself up higher in your life this morning, is it going to separate you from the love of Christ, connecting you with Christ, living one with Christ? Paul says, no, it is not going to separate us from the love of Christ because we have known our connection and our God. He goes on to say, shall persecution, persecution separate us from the love of God? Remember, we started by saying, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And now we are in number three of those things we are trying to look. Who is it or what is it? Shall persecution separate us from the love of Christ? Paul implying that 
in this journey of faith, persecution will be part of it. Persecution will be along our way. It will be improved upon our way. We shall find it. We shall encounter it along, along our way. Church of God, have you found persecution in this life? Persecution comes in all forms and shapes in this journey. Persecution comes in our way of life. When you choose Christ, there is persecution that we, there are things that we just work against you. There is resistive powers that we just stand against you. When you try to break through so that you can go and live with the living God, there are so many opposing forces that are standing against just that declaration, just that choice, just that declaring that is what you want to go wake up this morning, come to the altar in the morning, wake up prepare yourself, be ready, and be at the altar. There are already so many opposing force, for, for voices and the things that are working toward, against you, towards the declaration you have made. Persecution. Many will talk against you. Things will not align. Many will just shame things. They will bring against, against you. Some of them are false accusations. They will say things. They will say she is, she is, she is, she is, the, one, she is the one who, who intercedes. She's crying. She's singing. She's only like going and going to the Sunday all day long. She's pet time in the church. They spend time in the church. They are the ones who are always singing endlessly. They are the ones who do this and this. The devil will, will throw these things at you. Paul is asking, shall persecution, shall persecution draw us away from the love of Christ? Should they say that? Should they, should this persecution come along your way? What do you do and what do I do? And then the Bible continues to say, shall famine separate us from the love of Christ? Famine. It means there is a a possibility and likelihood that we shall encounter famine. This means there is going to be luck along this life. There's going to be, you know, when you're talking about famine, you're talking about hunger, we are talking about a lack, we are talking about things that are supposed to be with us but are not there, things that we need but we don't have them, things that we feel that we should have had them, we don't have them. Famine is a lack of things, even resources to feed our body. When we feel that even our bodies are lacking our wanting, should that separate us from the love of Christ? The Bible says, famine, he is the one who feeds us. He is our, he is our provider. What can God give us if there is a famine of any kind in our lives? Is that going to separate us from the love of Christ? Nakedness. Shall nakedness separate us from the love of Christ? It's still a question that Paul is asking. Nakedness? Church of God, it means there are those moments you'll find yourself so exposed, so exposed that you feel there is nothing left on you. You feel the enemy has exposed you from right to front. All what remains within you is what he cannot touch from the inside. But from the outside, he has exposed you in any design that he can think. People, everybody will talk against you in the family, in the fa in the friendship circles, in at workplace, everywhere. Exposure. Naked means, means there is a vulnerability of an exposure that is along your life. You feel as if you are seen by everybody. Everybody can see you. Every Like every mother is talking against you. Like everybody. Nakedness. You feel vulnerable. You feel lonely. You feel left out. You feel you feel you are by yourself. The Bible says, shall nakedness separate me from the life of Christ? When I am in that situation, feeling so lonely, so by myself, feeling so alone, so exposed, shall that separate us from the love of Christ? He talks about shall danger or sword, danger and sword. I'm going to conclude this now. Shall danger, is danger just all around about you, sickness, disease, Pain, danger of the unseen, danger, the enemy is always throwing arrows at you. Shall that danger separate you from the love of Christ or the sword? At the means, church of God, there are times that we shall find ourselves in very, 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 very vulnerable situations where it even involves rival death. It even involves that the danger is too much. You feel you have to go on this mission, but your security is not guaranteed. You are saying your steps. You know that there's a mission in front of you that the Lord has given you, but the steps to take, the journey along the way way. It's too risky. appears too risky. It's like you're being sent to go to the middle of the forest where there are lions, there are leopards, but you have to go and pass through to go to the other side. Child, that separate you from the love of Christ. This morning, church, we are so encouraged that nothing, Paul says, shut out of them and um, separate you from the love of Christ. You can read that verse down there, but he goes to say in verse Let's just finish it. Verse number 36. As it is written, for your sake, 
we face death all day long. We are considered as cheap to be slaughtered. Verse 37, Paul says, no, in all these things that we have mentioned, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors. No, in all these things, all of them that he talks about in that previous scripture, in all of them, we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus who loved us so much. I believe there's a great encouragement for me and for you this morning that the greatness of the Lord shall take us through in the name of Jesus. Let us believe this God, trust this God, wait upon this God and continue waiting upon this God and we know that he shall deliver us in the days to come in the name of our Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you and we glorify your name this morning. We bless you and we honor you, Lord, for the goodness of your life Upon us, my Father, we honor you. Thank you for loving us and for caring for us. Thank you for bringing us this far, Lord God Almighty, and for giving us a hope and a future in you, Christ Jesus. We honor you and we adore you, my God. You are highly lifted up in our lives this morning. We surrender to you, our Lord, that you may walk with us and that you may lead us to ways everlasting, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And this morning we declare together that in all these things, Lord, we are more than conquerors in Christ our Lord who loved us and who brought us this far. We declare we are more than and conquerors in you, Christ Jesus. Nothing and no one will separate us from the love of Christ that, Lord, you have called us into this morning. We thank you and we bless your name. Have your way in our lives in every situation in the name of Jesus. We glorify you, Lord. In the mighty name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray and we give thanks. Amen and amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to go to the next session and we shall ask our sister Lucy to lead us in the next session in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and thank you for the opportunity to share the word this morning. And uh, yes, that is what we do, and that is what we like doing. Hallelujah. So this morning, I thought about this Christian lifestyle. So what do we expect? How do we expect to look like? We've already had that we should not look at the, thing, the things we see. That is what we got from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 18. And the key words I got from that point are seen and not seen. So reality is there are things that are seen there are things that are not seen. Then we've just heard, what are the things that are seen? This is how they look like. From Romans 8, verse 35, that is a list of the things that are seen. We see trouble. We see hardship. We see persecution and not only see, we see, hear, and face. These are the things we walk across with. These are the things that are in our life day to day. We see nakedness, shame, guilt. We see danger. But what do we expect in this life when God says, you are? more than a conqueror. Like my sister always says, my pastor, Bible interprets Bible. So we'll turn to the book of Luke to look at how, if these are the things I shouldn't look at, what should I be looking at? What things are seen? And to answer this question, is this life worth it? Is this working up in the morning? So my sister, we are committing ourselves, we are dedicating ourselves to a Christian lifestyle. So what do we expect? And to answer that question, we'll turn to one character in the book of Luth, a lady called Naomi. And I'll keep putting the verses you can read because we're gonna go through the whole book of Luth in a few minutes in the 
in this discussion. And when we are done at your own time, you can look through the book and lead the verses. So Luth 1 verse 1 says, in the days when judges ruled Israel, there was a famine. What is seen here? Keyword, famine. That is what we are seeing. In the land, so a man from Bethlehem, Judah, not an Adarai, Bethlehem, Judah, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. Here, this is what we are being drawn at. Remember, our main character here is Naomi. What are we trying to do? To see what our life looks like when we dedicate ourselves to, or when God chooses us. At this point, all we know is Naomi is a wife of a man. And there is famine. What does Naomi and his husband see? Famine. And for that reason, they leave their country directed. Remember when God has chosen you, he's directing your steps. He's ordering what you see. So they leave their country. And guess what? Most of us here has left our country. While they are in Moab, the husband dies, the son dies, the sons. How can this be in God's plan for our life. Because you are Naomi, I'm Naomi, everybody is Naomi. Can you imagine? You are running away from famine. Then you go there and what are you seeing? Death. Not seeing it, it happens. That is in verse four. That is where we are told her husband dies, her children dies, and that is it. I can't imagine our scenario in a mother's life. And is, am I still in the will of God? Am I, so what am I, what is Naomi seeing? Naomi is seeing death. She is seeing famine. She is seeing nakedness. This is exactly what she's seeing. And for that reason, in our human capacity, we're gonna do something. And remember, God has chosen Naomi. I kept asking, why couldn't God choose the man? Does it have to be the woman? Does it have to be the mother? So Naomi and the girls, now we are in verse six of chapter, Luth chapter one. Naomi and the girls set out on the road that would take them back to Judah. Not back to Judah. And I derive the word Judah. Because that is not where Naomi came from. That is where Naomi's husband came from. Is, is God still in this? Are we still here? Let's still keep looking. What is unseen in this story? What is it that Naomi should be hanging for? At this point, you've lost your family. There is trouble. There is hardship. There is feminine. This nakedness, danger is imminent to this woman whom God has chosen to use as a vessel, as an instrument. So my sister, you put yourself knowing that you are vessel, you are an instrument of God. We are told he, we are, he's a potter, we are the clay, and God is molding. So I'm going into the mind of this woman called Naomi. What? Can this lead to? All she wanted is go back to a familiar situation. And to her, the familiar situation was Judah, where her husband came from. So we continue, my sister, to verse 13. And it is, does, you can see her emotion. She's going in verse 13. It is more better for me than for you because the Lord has died has turned against me, the heart of God. Can you imagine what you are thinking? So many times you felt like, God, is this what we bargained? Did you bring me here to shame me? 
the heart of God. So key words here, can you imagine has, when you feel that the heart of God has turned against you? And guess what, my sisters and brothers, that God is in the picture. Even that time when you're feeling the heart of God, just imagine God is in the picture. Remember here, Naomi is a destiny con connector, but she does not know. She has no clue. We can read this and interpret this scripture with the benefit of hindsight because we have an idea what will happen 600 years to come. But Naomi does not know. So my sister, you have no clue. And you're not meant to have. And you're not meant to know. Even that time when you are feeling the heart of God has dealt me a heavy blow. When you feel his face is not shining on me. Imagine he's still in the picture. So we are told in verse 14, at this, the girls, now Naomi has to go. She, imagine Naomi is at the right place, at the right time for the right reason, but she can't see this. She can't feel it. This is the unseenness in motion. This is what ends for. But Naomi, she can't see. She can only see, can these girls leave me alone, probably so that I can commit suicide? Can all these people disappear? Can my pastor stop talking about preaching? Can I stop so that I just want to kill myself and disappear because the heart of God? That is what Naomi is feeling. And we have seen the drama of Naomi telling the girls, you girls, can you get away from me? I don't want to eat. I don't want to talk. I'm a shame. I can only see nakedness. Why the hell did I tag my, bring my family here? Why did I come to Australia? Maybe if I stayed where I stayed, maybe things would. That is what Naomi is seeing. And she's barbarizing it. She's saying the heart of God. But we see in verse 14 of the same chapter, the girls wept. But there's one girl who kissed her mother goodbye. Because there are people in your life who will be pruned. There are people whom God will move, check because of his destiny, because of the purpose God has put in your life. But guess what Naomi says? Here I can lead. She doesn't know whether she's frustrated, whether she's anxious, whether she says because she's saying that she's, the girl has kissed her goodbye and she is gone. Then we are told in verse 15, Naomi says, your sister-in-law is, your sister-in-law is going back. Your sister is going back. Your mother is going back. Your husband is going back. You are whoever. Your job is disappearing. Guess what? Your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Adrain her God. So those people who are going back, those who people who are taken and moving out of your life, it's because they were not in your destiny. They have other gods to serve, but you, you are saving, a, you are serving a living God, and you have to trust on the unseen. We have no idea what the unseen is, my sister and brother, because we are Naomi, because we are human and we can't see. All you see is people abandoning you, people forsaking you. You want them to go, but you don't want them to go. You want the job to go, but you don't want it to go. Naomi is pleading with the girls not to go, but he says the, all she can see is confusion and emotional embarrassment. So think about that, my sisters and brothers. There are people who will go. There are situations that will go. There are habits that have to go. They are not in the destiny. They are not important. It's painful, but the truth is, the reality is, they are not part of the big picture of your God. They have people and God to serve. So we continue. And in verse 20, we see Naomi continues with her anguish. This is how a life dedicated to God looks like. This is what I'm going to expect, God. You called me before you knew me in my mother's wood for this kind of life. She goes, do not call me Naomi. Now we are in verse 20. Call me Mara. Amoite has made my life bitter. 
we are still in the picture. God is still in the picture. The key word here is frustration, is desperation, is my life is bitter. My sisters and brothers, remember, God is in control. He's in the picture. What is, un what is seen is nothing compared to what is unseen. So you think through those things. And we go to the Ruth chapter 2 where we we'll see, enter Naomi has bad purpose. The guy who died, now we see the connecting. Can you imagine? This man died, Naomi is going to his family. And you can see that in Ruth first two, we are told Naomi had her, and this is where we are going for the first time to hear the word of a man called Boaz. So we continue to chapter four. And we see now Boaz arriving, Naomi arriving. And Naomi now would have, you see, we know all the drama of Naomi and Ruth now, the girl who followed. So we know the drama and we can read that drama in chapter two of Naomi now meeting Boaz. And this Boaz would immediately start coaching this girl, directing her, guiding her, protecting and preserving. Naomi is still in the picture. So in verse 10 of chapter two, we see the girl, why have I found such favor? And we continue, may you be, so the girl now is talking. There is now connection. And Naomi is, the favor of Naomi is now, was not hers. Yani, yes, she, it is hers, but she was being used by God to go to Moabite and pick up this girl and deliver her. Because remember, we know that God needs Ruth and Boaz for his grad purpose many years to come. But Naomi is caught in the web of being God's vessel. My sister and brothers, you are caught in being God's vessel. And let me tell you, the drama that you are going to get in your life for in the unseen, walking, talking, looking like trouble, looking like hardship, looking like persecution, looking like famine, looking like danger and nakedness is nothing to weaken your feelings and your soul because now we know behind all this, God is in the picture. So we move on and we see in verse four, now boys have entered the picture. Verse 12, we see, may you be rewarded. No, so this is Ruth now giving, you know, being. Remember, Ruth, God knew her way before. So she's molded her personality, she's molded her desires, she's molded, God, I mean, God has molded her desires, her personality for her character. So, my sister, your personality, your character, you are everything is in the right place at the right time. And that is what it was meant to be because of the grand purpose that God has for your life. So we now see in chapter three and four, and I'm condensing this now, that all this drama that is happening between Ruth and Boaz. Of course, we get caught up in the romance. We get caught up with the papa, you know, all the romance and the emotional connection between Ruth and Boaz. But that is what we see, my sister. We see romance. We see them holding hard. We see them this. But that is nothing compared to the grand plan. So what is unseen here? We all know that in verse, now we are in Luke chapter four, verse 18 to 20, that Luke and Boaz would become the parents of Obed, who would become the father, Obed would become the father of Jesse. Jesse will become 
the father of David. And we know David, we call Jesus the son of David. My sister and brothers, this is happening 400 years to come. Naomi would never see this, would never know this. What would take Naomi through all this? It is the prayers, it is the fasting, it is the reading of the word of God, it is just her character. So yes, she's powered by the Holy Spirit. So my sister, when you look aloud, when you look in your life and all you are seeing is chaos, imagine Naomi getting back to her people. It is her in-laws place and you know how they were talking about her. Yes, we've just had this morning. They will talk about you. They even came to see, is that Naomi? What were they looking at? They were seeing this nakedness. They were seeing the woman who left for greener pastures. Ule mama alieda maju. Now she's back even without children. Now her children are dead. This is what the crowd is seeing. So they will mock you. They will lead you. They will talk about that woman. Look, she went, all oh, her people are dead now. But you are the appointed one. You are the chosen one. You are the one that God is empowering. And you are the destiny connector. This girl is a Moabite. God needs this David, this Jesus will be born from the tribe of Judah. So we've going to go look for a Moabite to come bring her woe so that we can carry the seed that God is come, coming from Boaz. These are the God's machinations that we will never see. So my sisters, are we not all aware of Jesus would be born in Bethlehem many, many years ago. So we are caught up in God's plan. We are caught up in this. And I want is to encourage yourself and say, my life is perfect. I am where I'm meant to be. I am doing what I'm meant to be doing there. Now, all I need to do is wake up and read this word so that I can be encouraged. And no, I'm not the first one. Naomi was there three, 2,000 years ago, way before I was formed in my mother's womb. Whatever we are going through, my sisters and brothers, is not new. God's drama will happen with you, in you, allowed you around you everywhere. Our prayer is to distinguish between God's drama and people's drama. People's drama looks like this. They come and look at her. She has lost all her children. Look at her. She lost her job. Look at her. That is people's drama because it's based on the scene. God's drama, will, something will happen in your life and you're thinking, so God, where did that come from? Where did COVID come from so that I lost my job? Why was COVID here when my daughter was dying in Adelaide and City? Why was that? There'll be God's drama. And my sister, your work is to soak yourself with the word of God so that you can tell the difference between God's drama and people's drama. Otherwise, drama will happen on this life, under this life, in this world, allowed you. It will look like your children are dead. They are not dead. It will look like there is a mission. Your husband could look like he's dead. He's not dead. This has Purpose. Naomi's husband was the destiny corrector, even in death. I imagine if Naomi's death was alive, there is no way Naomi would have gone to his relative. 
we are told if this husband was there and we all have had husbands or have had husbands and boyfriends, you know how they study in your way and how they make decisions, but God have to check and move. So had God, had this husband been allowed, Naomi would not have gone to look for Boaz. But the man was moved. Just think that is what was unseen. When Naomi's husband died, I can imagine the waiting and yelling and yelling. But God, can you believe it? God is in that picture. This man has to move because I'm interested in that girl. And on, I can only trust that girl in this woman so that this woman can take this girl back to Judah so that she can meet. Oh, that's God's mission for Naomi's dead husband. What about the children? Yani, the sons are dead. Did they have purpose? Can you imagine if Luther's husband had not died? There's no way Jesus would have been born in that lineage. But my sister and brothers, God's DNA, and in Jesus' name, you are in the right place in the right picture and on God's purpose. Amen. Yes, yes. Over to you, Pastor. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. I believe the insights are real. They are deep. We just don't have enough time because we have to finish in two minutes. But we feel how true is this and how real is this and how relevant is this to our lives in this day and era and to all of us. One, it's all, all very encouraging, but we must leave this after this morning, knowing too well that your life is not a chance or a mystic. Exactly as it is, exactly as it is moving on, that life is a, a purpose of the living God. If you are moved, sometimes you look at them and you wonder why are they right or right or not, they look good or not good, child of God, stick there, stay there. Wait there, continue traveling, continue waiting. Because the picture is greater, the picture is bigger. Because of your, our human limitations, we see what we see. But behind that we have seen, there is the unseen that we can never know about the unseen. We are truly blessed this morning. We thank God for revelation. We thank God for the power of his word this morning. Receive your portion in the name of Jesus and let this work in you and for you, encourage you, lift you up and keep doing what you are doing. What you are doing is exactly what you're supposed to be doing and the Lord is involved. One thing understand, the Lord is involved. In the least of circumstances, the Lord is in those circumstances. In the biggest of circumstances, the Lord is with you in those circumstances. Child of God, we are a people of destiny. And this destiny will have to be accomplished in the name of Jesus. God bless you all for being in the house this morning and for receiving this grace that we are operating in. And we believe that by the power of the word of God, Every one of us will stand out one day and will say, it was worth it that I waited in the name of Jesus. Amen. We want to commit ourselves before the Lord and release ourselves just right there and ask the Lord to help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Mighty and everlasting Father, we acknowledge your goodness over our lives, Lord. Amen. And our Lord, you have spoken to us this morning and we feel taught, encouraged, and lifted up our God. We feel you have a purpose for us and we feel and we know that you knew where we are at at life, our God, and that we need to be pumped and to be encouraged and to be told that that is my way for you. That is my purpose for you on this day. There is nothing wrong. Whatever you see and whatever you hear, it is all working for you in the name of Jesus. Jesus we need to trust a good God, our yes. unseen God, who works in unseen and in the seen. And above it all, much more is in the, in the unseen, in the yes. spiritual realm, working yes. for you every Amen. day, working Amen. for us, working Amen. in us every day. It is working, my sister. It is working yes. for you. It is working yes. for you, my brother. It is working for me. It is working for us. Church yes. of God, let us hold it there. Because yes. this child, Jesus, will have to be born in Bethlehem, yes. in your lineage. This Savior will have to be lifted up through you and in you, 
into the whole world. You are the chosen vessel. You are the vessel of honor. This morning, we are vessels of honor in this place. Vessels to be used to deliver the Messiah into the world out there. That vessel is not the leopard or the bishop or myself or the pastor. It's you this morning in the name of Jesus. The least of the circumstances is what the Lord uses. This day, people might despise. They might look. They might shame. They might do it all. They did it all to Naomi. Roof was and bless all the vessels that he's using in our midst every day. May you be lifted up, increased in every way that we shall continue to travel and to soldier on together and so that the missions of our lives will be accomplished. No question, no doubt. That is what it is. And with that, Jesus will do you well in the name of Jesus. Be blessed and have a very good day in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And even Philip, even if we had prayer points today, they are all sorted in the name of Jesus. Many a time we may come thinking we are bringing prayer points before the Lord. The Lord brings a table in front of us. And in the table, the prayer points are met. May all the prayer points be met this morning in the name of Jesus. We release ourselves and we go on our way, knowing we have already been fed. God bless you so much for being in the house today. Receive that grace and walk in that grace now and forevermore in the name of Jesus. We shall meet you again on Friday morning. Prepare your heart. Prepare your anything that you can prepare. Come and receive from the Lord on such an early morning. Let the sacrifice be real in our lives in the name of Jesus. God bless you all so much. And for all of us that are ministering to one another, being ministered to, lifting ourselves up in intercessory, in prayer, lifting us, ourselves up, may God do us well as we continue burning for the power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Have a very good day. We shall see you on Friday morning. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Be blessed and see you next day.